to get started. Um, I really appreciate everybody being on tonight. Uh, I guarantee it's going to be worth your time. We're going to fly through as many questions as possible and go over some really important strategies that you're definitely going to be tested on on the SAT and ECT. So let me go ahead and get my webcam started here. Uh, at the risk of scaring everybody. And I can turn on a little bit. Oops. Okay. Good enough. So um, again, um, my name is Tom Ehlers. I'm the president and founder of Method Test Prep. And I really appreciate you guys all being on tonight. I'm definitely going to make it worth your time. Um, and just a little bit about my background. I think it's very important to me that you all know that I have spent many, many, many hours uh, working with students, um, tutoring and teaching them strategies and teaching in classrooms. And now I've spent a lot of time online teaching students. And, and, uh, and it's been really rewarding because when I am working with students, um, you know, often I get, wow, that's been so helpful. Those strategies, you know, have really helped. So I'm not somebody who just sits in a cubicle somewhere. I spend all day, every day, working with students and teachers. So, um, so I know that you all get a lot out of tonight. Just for a little fun here, uh, there are my twin five-year-olds. So I actually do have a life outside of SAT and ACT prep. Not much of a life, but a little bit of one. And, and I uh, know I haven't started them on SAT and ACT prep yet. Um, they're going to turn five in January, so I'm going to wait till next summer for that. And yes, that was a joke. I will not be tutoring them next summer. Um, uh, so I'm not one of those crazy parents. And ju just a couple of housekeeping notes, everybody. I do have a couple of colleagues on tonight who will be answering questions, as many as they can. Um, I will answer a lot of questions, and um, <clears throat> if you have some questions that don't get answered, you can always get in touch with us. But we want to keep the presentation tonight to these two strategies, which are questions involving percents and incorrect comparison questions. So um, there is a lot of information you can find on our website, uh, methodtestprep.com. So if you haven't been to methodtestprep.com, you can go there, you can get things like the SAT and ACT test dates. You can get um, study guides for the SAT and ACT review packet. So quite a lot of information there. So let's get started, everybody. And uh, the goal of this presentation is simple. Teach you all two important strategies and take some of the mystery into the, out of the getting into college process, which I know can seem overwhelming, um, but we can at least take some of the mystery out of that tonight. And one thing I want to make sure every one of you is very aware of, the SAT and the ACT, these are not IQ tests. These are tests you can prepare for. They're extremely repetitive. The questions I show you tonight, you are going to see questions exactly like these on your SAT and ACT. So we can go over a bunch of questions tonight, and you're going to see very, very similar questions. That's why you really can make a big difference in your score. <coughs> And um, if you don't know this already, jot this down. I think this information is very interesting to students. On the SAT, each additional question that you get correct equals 10 additional points on your score. So think about that for a second. If you get five more math questions, five more reading, and five more writing questions, that's a 150-point improvement on your SAT score. That's insane. That's a big, big difference. So, and every one of you is capable of that. Every one of you guys can raise your score 150 points. Matter of fact, just from tonight's class, you could raise your score 100 points because I'm going to show you enough to get five more questions in math and five more questions in writing. The news on the ACT is, is also good. Each additional question is one more point on your ACT score. So you get five more math questions on the ACT, five more reading, five more English, five more science. That could be a four or even five point difference on your ACT, which is a very significant difference. You guys know raising these scores means getting into more colleges, possibly getting more financial aid 
um, merit-based scholarships. Um, so it's worth your time to put in the time. Okay, whoops, skipped one there. <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, this is a very, very typical SAT and ACT question. This is, for me, this is the most, most enjoyable part of the presentation is actually digging into some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud as you guys read it to yourselves. In a certain store, the regular price of a refrigerator is $600. How much money is saved by buying this refrigerator at 20% off the regular price rather than buying it on sale at 10% off the regular price with an additional discount of 10% off the sale price. Now, the SAT and ACT are hoping to trick you into thinking, well, there's no difference. If you get 20% off or if you get 10% and then 10 more percent off, there's no difference. But fortunately, they didn't put zero as an answer choice because the question again is, <clears throat> let me get some color here. The question is how much money is saved, okay? so. Um, I know that that can be a trick question for some people, but let's dig into it. Uh, they're saying 20% off the regular price. Now, 20% is always 0 0.20. So you can always turn 20% into just a decimal. Um, and many of you, of course, know that, or it might have been a while since you've done percents in school. Some of you guys are so far ahead of this stuff, you have to go back and refresh your memory. So 20% is 0 0.20 and it's 20% off the regular price, so we need to do 0.20 times 600, okay? So, just looks like that. And 20% of 600, you do on your calculator, graphing calculator, whatever calculator you want to use on these exams, <coughs> and you get 120. So, if I'm getting the refrigerator for 20% off, that's $600 minus 120, okay, and that's going to give us 480. So, there's um, the first option. Now, the second option is you get it for 10% off, so of course that's 0.10. Okay, and if some of you guys are sort of racing ahead of me and have already solved it, that's great. Um, but I want to make sure I go at a pace that's appropriate for most students, and uh, and we will be doing some very hard questions tonight. 0.10 times 600, so that's 10% of 600 is 60. So then we have to do 600 minus 60. 600 minus 60, that gives us 540. And then they say they're going to take 10% off of that price. Okay, so that sounds like a pretty good deal. 0.10 times 540. Um, and so that's 54. So now it's 540 minus 54. And that's going to give you 486. So now we're pretty close to the right answer. It's always a good idea to go back and reread the question. Again, how much money is saved? We've already highlighted that. So how much money is saved? Well, 480, 46, it's a $6 difference. So you're actually saving $6 if you're just getting 20% off the regular price. So choice A is correct. Okay? And remember, everyone, we're going to send you a, a recording of this webinar. So you can always go back and re-watch one of the questions or a few of the questions just to make sure you really understood all the material. Um, so that's a nice thing. If I went a little too fast on that question, you can go back and you can review it. And I'll star this one just like I would star everyone. This is a really important question, guys. You're definitely going to be tested on this question, something just like it. I love that I can guarantee you're going to see a question like this. All right, let's move on. So. <clears throat> Again, I'll read it out loud as you guys read it to yourselves. A lot of times the reading is the trickiest part. A box of staples contains 4,600 staples that are either silver, black, or red. If 46% of the staples are silver and 46% are black, what percent are red? So this is a trick question, and they got me to, they almost got me to fall for the trick the first time I read it. I was about to do, okay, 0.46 times 4,600. That would give me how many of the staples are silver, okay, and then do the same math, and that would give me how many, you know, are black, and then I have to try to subtract those. But that's not what the question's asking. It's an easier question. It just says, what percent are red? Well, we know that all together, the three colors have to add up to 100%. So if you already have, um, if you already have 46%, 
silver, and then you're, you already have 46% black. Uh, 46 plus 46 is 92. So that's 92% right there. And so the remaining percent, it's just 100 minus 92. So 100 minus 92 is, of course, 8. So there are only 8% left. And so 8% of the staples must be red. So that was actually an easier level question, but it's very, it's very common to misread that question. So um, a lot of the math is just a matter of being more careful with the reading. And somebody says, well, Tom, how do you get more careful reading these questions? By doing more of them. Okay, I'm not asking you to do 200 SAT or ACT questions a night. I'm asking you to spend half an hour, an hour a night um, in the couple weeks leading up to your SAT, and then you'll do enough questions where they become second nature. It becomes, just like in a sport, it becomes muscle memory, and you start to make less and less silly mistakes. Okay, let's jump into the next one. And this one, this one, everyone, was rated a very hard question. You can see it's number 19, and that was in a section of 20 questions. So if it's 19 out of 20, this was one of the hardest questions. So for those of you on right now who feel like the first two questions were pretty gettable and easy, this will be a really good challenge question. And for those of you who are intimidated by the SAT and ACT, which is very normal, um, hopefully when I explain this question, even a really hard question like this will seem less intimidating. So here we go. In a certain shop, items were put in a showcase and assigned prices for January. Each month after that, the price was 10% less than the price for the previous month. If the price of an item, of an item was $8 for January, what was the price for April? Okay. So that's a very wordy question. Most students, when they first read that question, um, will will panic a little bit. We'll get a little bit intimidated, a little bit frustrated. Many students will simply skip this question. The first thing I want you guys, as far as a strategy or technique, I want you to zone in on the word percent. Every time you see the word percent, you can simplify the question by thinking um, along a certain pathway. And, and the pathway here is the fact that they use a variable. So if they use a variable on the SAT or ACT, you are always allowed to plug in numbers. Okay, and that's a strategy um, that many of you have heard before. It is my favorite strategy for both the SAT and ACT. So I see a letter, I'm going to plug in a number. And because it's a percent question, I'm always going to plug in 100. Okay, make my life easier, I'm going to plug in 100. So I want you guys to all write this down, okay, if you haven't already, which is just P equals, oops, P equals 100. And then it's probably a good idea to put in parentheses Jan, just to remind ourselves that that's the price for January. Now, it says that the price goes down by 10%. So just like before, 10%, we all know is 0.10. And of in math always means time. So 10% of 100 is 0 0.10 times 100, and that gives us 10. Of course, we know that. So the price is going down by $10, 10% 10 of 100. So that means the price is going to be 90 in February. So they are trying to trick us, everybody. They're hoping that a lot of students are rushing. They're running out of time. They say, oh, great. 190, the next month must be 80, next month must be 70. Um, and some of you guys might have figured this out, but that's one of the tricks they're trying, or the traps they're trying to get you to fall into. But it, notice it says 10% less, and you switch the color to highlight my point here, 10% less than the price for the previous month. So it's 10% of 90. So now we do 0.10 times 90. Okay, 0.10 times 90 is 9, so 10% of 90 is $9. So now we're taking $9 off, so 90 minus 9 is 81. So we're going down by 10% each month. So now in March, you're getting that same, um, <clears throat> what is it, the same item for $81. Okay, you guys see where I'm going? Switch colors again. 10% um, of 81, so it's 0.10 times 81, OK? 
Okay, you would use your calculator, you would get 8.1 and 81 minus 8.1. Okay, and that gives you 72.9. And you look at the choices and it's pretty clear that E is the correct answer. And it is the correct answer, but a lot of students say to me, yeah, but wait a second. Why doesn't choice E say 72.9? It says 0.729. The reason for that is 0.729p, excuse me. The reason for that is that the last step when you're plugging in numbers is you plug your number into the choices. Remember, our original number was 100. So we're plugging 100 into the choices and we're looking for a choice that gives us 72.9. And as we go through the choices, A is not going to give, B is not going to give us. But when you plug 100 into choice E, it's going to give you exactly 72.9. And some of you may be in your head thinking of a good question, which is, well, wait a sec, Tom. What if you did not know to use to plug in 100? First of all, always plug in 100 if it's a percent question. But if you forgot that strategy or you forgot that rule, you would still get the right answer. You just have to do more work. So if you plugged in 40, you would have gotten a weird answer. And then you would have had to look to see which choice would have given you that weird answer. It would have been choice E but it would have required another step. So I don't like to baby you guys with just easy questions. I feel like that's boring. That's a waste of everybody's time. I wanted to, and it's, it's so exciting to me to have so many students on and, um, you know, and, and teach so many students at the same time. I wanted to teach you guys the hardest questions. So um, if, if, you, if you understood this question, then kudos to you because this is about as hard as they get on the SAT and ACT. And if this question seemed a little overwhelming, then go back and watch the recording tomorrow or the next day, and you'll find that you can understand this question. You may just need to go through it two or three times. Okay, uh, let me stop blabbing everybody and let you guys try a problem. So um, on, the SAT, on the SAT and on the ACT, you get about one minute per math question. So I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you a little extra time, maybe a minute and a half. So everybody, I'm going to give you about a minute and a half. When you think the, you have the answer, just jot it down on your paper. Keep it to yourself. And then I'm going to, I'm going to um, open up a poll, and you can put your answer into the poll. All right, so go ahead and try this question. Give you about a minute and a half. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to stop you guys there. If you don't have a chance to finish this one, um, maybe try to just narrow it down and take your best guess. And you're going to have time to try a bunch more questions in a minute. So, um, so let me open up a poll and give everybody a chance to select their answer. So I'm going to launch the poll, everybody. Um, if you're on an iPad, you won't be able to participate, but you can still you know, keep the answer. And if you did get the question right, you can give yourself a pat on the back. Um, so I'm going to launch this poll. If you have an answer, um, put it down. And even if you're not sure, 
On, on the ACT, remember, you should answer every question. So even if you don't know, you should answer it. And on the SAT, if you can narrow it down at all, then you should answer the question, right? On the SAT, you should only leave it blank if you have no clue. So go ahead and narrow it down as best you can if you're not sure. <clears throat> okay, most of you guys have voted, but let me wait you know, a few more seconds for a few more votes. Okay, so um, th th there actually was a real split on this one. There are a lot of people who chose all five answers, so that's good. That, that means that I'm choosing questions that are worth your time, because if I, if I saw that 95% of people got it right, that would, be, um, you know, that would be a waste of everyone's time. So this was a hard question. Um, a lot of you got it right, but a lot of you got it wrong, so let's go through it, and I'll keep you guys in suspense for a second as I go through this question. So, Obviously, it's a percent question, and you see a letter, so you're going to plug in numbers. Now, um, a lot of people think I'm going to plug in eight, because you think about pizza pie, right? Um, mm, pizza. I'm going to make myself hungry. Um, so that, that's a normal thing to plug in, but it's much easier if you just plug in 100 or plug in 10. And, you know, I was going to plug in 100, but I'm like, do I really want to deal with a pizza with 100 pie, 100 slices? No. So I'm just going to make K10. 100 would have been fine, but 10 is also a really easy number. So watch how much easier this question is now. A person slices a pie into 10 equal pieces and eats one piece. In terms of K, what percent of the pie is left? Well, if you, if you eat one piece, um, there are nine, nine out of 10 pieces left. So what percent of the pie is left? So nine out of 10 is 0 0.90, and 0 0.90 is the same as 90%. So 90% of the pie is left. Now, guys, we're doing the same three steps we always do. And, and this, this whole strategy is on methodtestprep.com. Many of you have access to our web-based program through your school. And this is a lesson on methodtestprep.com, which you take five minutes and you listen to this lesson, um, you will learn the strategy very quickly. So step one is to plug in a number. And you always write the number that you plugged in to the left of the choices. So you see I'm writing it to the left. That's step one. Step two is to answer that question. We did that, 90%. Step three is simply put our number into the choices and wait for a choice that gives us 90%. So choice A, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 100 is 900. We want 90. 900 is not 90, so that's out. Choice B. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 100 is 900. 900 divided by 10 is 90. Bingo. That one looks good. But people say, well, Tom, don't you have to try the other choices? You should if you have an extra second. So choice C, 100 times 10 is 1,000. 1,000 divided by 9. 1,000 divided by 9 is not going to give you 90. Choice D, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 over 100, that's 9 one hundredths percent. That's not the same as 90%. In fact, that's like 0.09 percent. So it, that's you know, that, that is a trick answer. A lot of people choose it, but it's not 90. And then D, E, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 over 100 times 10 is 1,000, and that's no good either. So the only one that worked was choice B. Now some people say, hey, hold on a second. Um, you could have done that an easier way. I really like the plug-in number strategy, but I do want to acknowledge the other strategy, which is, guys, every and jot this down. This is just a great little strategy or technique. Every time you see the word percent, percent is always part over whole. Right? So as soon as I see the word percent, I often write down part over whole just to organize my thinking. So what's the whole in this question? Well, the whole is the total number of pieces. There are k pieces. And then what's the part? Well, what, what percent is left? What's left over is k minus 1. Okay, k minus 1 has to go on the top. And then on any percent question, you, you guys know you learned in probably fifth or sixth grade, when you change something from a decimal to a percent, you multiply by 100. So I need to multiply this expression by 100. And um, I know that's a little bit sloppy, but you guys can make it out. That matches up perfectly with choice B. 
So that's two completely different ways. Let me use a different color here. Um, two completely different ways. This is option A, and this is option B. And what I love is both ways work every single time. So every single time you can use either option. Guys, this is a great question for you guys to watch on the recording, for you guys to review. That right there is 10 freaking points on your SAT or an extra point on your ACT. Just that one question, which most students are going to get wrong, but most of you guys are going to get right. Okay. Um, so it is more fun to let you guys try the question. So um, let me pull another one up here. And again, I'm going to give you a minute and a half to try this one. Give you your best shot. It's like a fun little challenge, a fun brain teaser. Okay. Even if you feel intimidated or frustrated, um, give it your best shot. Okay. And I'll stop you after about a minute and a half. Go for it. About 20 more seconds. Okay. Now I gave you a few extra seconds there, guys. So let me open up this poll and <clears throat> give you guys a chance to answer. Go for it. Okay, a few more seconds. About 65% of people have voted. I know a few of you can't. I want to get at least as many votes as I had last time. Okay, um, again, there's a real mixture of answers here, guys, which again is a good sign to me. Um, so anyway, um, a lot of you did get it correct, but many of you did not, so it's worth going over. This is a tough one. Let me close up this poll. Okay, so. Um, two ways to do it. First of all, and this is a strategy that you guys are going to use over and over and over again, turn the words into a math equation. What I mean by that is 75% just means 0.75. Okay? And then oven math always means times, so times m. So if you ever see any percent of anything else, it's just the point whatever percent times m is equal to, of course, that just means equals k percent. A couple of ways you can write k percent, but probably the easiest way to think about it is just k over 100, right? Because percent is always out of 100 and times 25. So um, jot this down, everybody, if you haven't jotted it down already. We just turned the whole math equation, or the whole word problem to a math equation. Now, you guys know, that just to make it easier to look at, you put this over 1, 25 over 1. You reduce, so 25 and 100 can each be divided by 25, so that's 1 and 4. So after doing that, I have 0.75m equals k over 4. Whoops, 
sorry. K over four. Okay. So now when I'm if you're ever looking at an at an SAT or ACT math problem and it looks anything like this, guys, real simple. You put the other thing over one. Back to black here. Put it over one and then you cross multiply. So you do 0.75m times 4. That gives you 3m. So 3m equals k. Okay. So somebody says, okay, Tom, that was easy. I got to that part on my own, but how do you finish it from here? They're asking you for m over k. So you just need to move stuff around, shuffle stuff around, so you end up with m over k. So what I mean by that is, first of all, we can divide both sides by k. Divide both sides by k, and of course, these k's are going to cancel to 1 over 1, and then you have 3m over k equals 1. I don't have to write 1 over 1. It's the same. And I want to get rid of the 3. I want to move that to the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I have m over k equals 1 over 3. Bingo. That's the correct answer. That's choice B. Okay, so that was a really nasty question. If you got that question right, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, if you understood my explanation, then still give yourself a pat on the back because that proves that you can understand even the hardest questions. And for those of you who say, whoa, whoa man, I didn't get anything you just said, watch it again. Watch the recording again. Watch it a second or a third time. Maybe ask your math teacher in school. Ask a friend, a parent. Um, you know, a tutor, and, and, and you'll get this question, and that's as hard as they get on these exams. So that's really the best way to answer that question. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having such a good time, and I'm realizing it's already 9.35, so I'm going to hold off on going over another way to answer that question. Uh, we'll have to save that for another day. I want to get to one more math question, then we're going to jump over to English. So let me see. I don't know if I want to do that one. Yeah, you know what? Let, let, let's do this one. It's a good real-world question. I always get people to say, why am I studying this nonsense? What am I going to use in the real world? Well, this is a real-world business question, so it's definitely worth everybody's time. I'm just going to give you a minute, guys, because I want to speed things up a little bit. Go for it. Take one minute, see if you can get through this one, or at least get through half of it. Okay, that was a minute, everybody. So, oh, shoot, I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot this was a, uh, a gridding question. All right, no big deal. Keep your answer to yourself. If you get it right, then, um, again, you just have to give yourselves a pat on the back and have that satisfaction that you got it right. Um, all right, so let's do this quickly. So Tom and Allison are both salespeople. Tom's weekly compensation consists of 300 bucks plus 20% of his sales. So um, you guys probably know what I'm going to do because I'm going to write $300 plus 20% of his sales. Okay. 20% of X. Okay. Doesn't sound such a good deal to me unless I'm getting a lot of sales. Um, and then there's, an, there's another person, Allison, who she gets 200 bucks but she gets a higher percentage of her sales, okay? So, and they ask us, well, what if they both had the same amount of sales and the same compensation? So, of course, guys, when you start hearing the words same amount, same compensation, you're going to use equals. So, I don't know if that was the tricky part to a lot of people, but I'm going to put an equals right here. So, this is Tom over here, okay? 
and then this is Allison, so she's getting 200 bucks. Plus, she's getting 0 0.25, 25% of her sales. Okay. Maybe she took that deal because she figured, I'm going to beat that sucker Tom. I'm going to get tons of sales. I'm going to make a lot more money than him. But this week, they have the same amount of sales. So this is our equation. You guys, a lot of you guys probably did this next or you probably, you probably did this next step, and those of you who did it probably see what you got to do next. You're going to subtract $200 from both sides, right? We want to simplify this equation and get rid of the $200. And we're also going to subtract 0.20x from both sides, right? Because if you have the same letter on both sides of an equation, you want to get it over to one side. You guys know that. So we're going to, um, we're going to subtract 0.20x from both sides. And when we do that, we have $100 on the left-hand side. Okay, these cancel, and the and equals, and then it's 0.05x. All right, 0.05x, and then you guys know what to do as the next step. You always want to get the letter all by itself, so you divide both sides by 0.05. Okay, you know, let your calculator do that for you, um, save you some time, and that gives you 2,000. So x equals 2,000. And the SAT and the ACT are very good at tricking you into thinking you're done. But you ask yourself, what is X? X was the sales. Okay? Put that. We can see that because it's 25% 20 of the sales. So sales is X. So this right here, this is sales. That's not what the question asks. If the question asks what were their sales, then we'd be done. The question is asking what was that compensation. And guys, I know you've been told this every year by your teachers is you got to reread the question before you put your answer down. I know, duh, Tom, I've heard that since I was in third grade. Yeah, but a lot of people don't do it. Oh, yeah. One of the things that I'm really good at, guys, I always remember to go back and reread the question that eliminates a lot of careless mistakes. Compensation. To get compensation, I'm going to plug this back into either side. So if I plug $2,000 into Tom, 2,000 times 0.20 is $400. 400 plus 300 is 700 bucks. And that is the correct answer. So if you had 700, great job. Um, and if you understood what I just said, then great job as well. Now, guys, I would double check that by taking a look at Allison's side. So I took a look at Allison's side. So it's 2,000 times 0.25. So a quarter of 2,000 is 500. 500 plus 200 is also 700. Either way, we're getting 700. That confirms that we did this question correctly. So that's a gridding question, which, of course, there are not gridding questions on the ACT, but you could very, very easily see a question like this on the ACT. It would just be multiple choice. Okay, um, so um, I can do math all night. I've got to stop here. We've got to move on to grammar, okay? Because what I promised you guys in this webinar was I was going to um, go over a very, very, some very important math strategies and some very important grammar stuff. So the, the rule that I'm going to talk about tonight is incorrect comparisons, okay? And, um, well, the fastest way to explain this is to go through this example. The SAT and ACT loves to test students on incorrect comparisons. Here's an example. Sam felt extremely confident going into the final round of interviews because his list of credentials was far more impressive than his competitor. The mistake here is choice D, because Sam's list of credentials, excuse me, is being compared to his competitor rather than his competitor's list of credentials. That is a bad comparison. You're comparing his list of credentials to his competitor. So you're comparing a list of credentials to a person. No good. You've got to compare a list of credentials to the other person's list of credentials. So we, even though we may understand the sentence, his competitor's or his competitor's list needs to be used here. You would actually have to say it was far more impressive than his competitor's list. That's what would have to go in here. Or even just his competitor's with an apostrophe would be better. Okay. So um, that's a trick question. A lot of people get that question wrong. Here's the good news, guys. They just repeat this over and over again. Check out this next example. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to go right to the example. Okay, you guys should too. 
um, the white fur of the polar bear blends in with the winter environment more effectively than the grizzly bear. It's got to be then the fur of the grizzly bear. Right? And I hope a lot of you guys are nodding your head right now and saying, yeah, Tom, that makes sense, because it was the same exact, you know, basically, um, excuse me, same exact example as the last one. And they just repeat this, repeat it over and over and over again on the ACT and on the SAT. You have to look for this rule in the fur of the grizzly bear. So that would be the white fur of the polar bear blends in with the winter environment more effectively than the fur of the grizzly bear. Okay, so we're comparing fur to fur, or one's list to another one's list, person to a person. Okay, so read this one to yourself. This one will only take you 10 or 15 seconds. Let me open up a poll, and you guys can put your answer in. So you're picking where there's an error. If you feel there's no error, then you just go ahead and choose E. And by the way, on the ACT, they would give you four answer choices. One of the answer choices would just be leave it the same, keep the sentence the same, and then they would they would give you some other choices. So go ahead and um, pop your answer in here. Okay, just a few more votes, please. Most people have voted. I want to get up to about 70%, so most of you guys haven't a chance to take part. By the way, when we teach our online classes, um, they're very interactive, okay? They're even more interactive than this, um, than this class tonight. Uh, we, have, we have literally hundreds of students on tonight, so we don't have that many people on our, our online classes. So just want you guys to know you do get to participate a ton. Um, even more than tonight. So anyway, good job everyone. 68% of you got this question right. It is B. So that's excellent. That's a much higher percent than on the math questions. And so it is B. It's got to be unlike Klee's paintings. Right? Okay. Um, so again, I know this is still tricky to some people in that this may be the first time you're learning this rule. Okay? But paintings. I ran out of room. I'll just put the C there. It's like my five-year-old writes words with like the last letter below. Um, so obviously Whistler's paintings, unlike Klee's paintings, are conventional in their subject matter. So the error here was B, um, and that's the same exact rule. Let's move on. Okay, this is a, this is a challenging one. Go ahead and take, take your time. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And I'll have you guys pop in your answer. Okay, um, stop there. By, by the way, um, I'm having a great time. I hope a lot of you guys out there are having a great time. This can actually be fun, um, or maybe not. I mean, not as fun as like, you know, playing basketball or you know, playing Xbox. But it's fun. These are like brain teasers, challenges. So let's see how many of you guys ate this brain teaser. Let me launch this poll. Go ahead and pop in your answer. Okay, great. Everyone got their answers in quickly. Five more seconds. Alrighty, I'm impressed. 77% um, of you voted and 81% of you got the question correct, which is choice B. That's a very hard question. Um, so why is it B? One reason that an insect can walk on walls while a human cannot is that the mass the mass of its tiny body is far lower than that of a human body. And there the that stands for mass. So we're comparing the mass of the insect's body 
to the mass of a human's body. So that's a proper comparison. Whereas all the other choices are incorrect comparisons, right? Like if you just read A, one reason that an insect can walk on walls while a human cannot is that the mass of its tiny body is far lower than humans. Well, you're comparing the mass of its body to humans. That's not a correct comparison. So that, you know, at least choice A would be out. By the way, guys, when you encounter these types of questions on the SAT, I, you should always read the sentence as it is. If you like the way the sentence sounds, then you go ahead and choose A. A is always keep it the same, okay? Keep it the same. So if you like the way it sounds, keep it the same. But most time, or I should say lean towards A, but most times you're not going to like the way the sentence sounds. At that point, you can cross out A and just go through B, C, D, and E, crossing out the ones you don't like. Hopefully, you narrow it down to maybe two choices, and then you can zero in on those two. Right, so that's process of elimination, a POE, and that's just as applicable to the ACT, that you get rid of the bad choices. And there, there are ACT questions that are just like this. The format's slightly different, but the, um, the content, the concept is the same. Okay, nice job, everybody. Let's do another tough one. Um, okay, read this, give you 20 seconds. Okay, that was 30 seconds. Let's open up this poll. Pop your answer in. Yes. 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 Okay, we got to do something to keep this fun. 75% um, of you guys, this is a nasty question. Nasty, okay? You know, somebody says, Tom, what the heck are you doing giving these kids all these nasty questions? This is as hard as you're going to see, guys. 63% of you guys got it correct. It's D, okay? So it is choice D. A lot of people did choose E, and I know E is annoying. People say, Tom, how do you know when to choose E? There's no simple rule when to choose no error. What I do is I read it once. If I don't hear an error, I read a sentence second time, more slowly. If I don't hear an error that second time, I'm just going to go ahead and put E. But here, the, the answer was D because it's got to be most biologists' theory. All right, so let me read it out loud. We don't care about her name. Who cares? Her theory that evolution is a process involving inter interdependency rather than competition among organisms differs dramatically from most biologists' theory. Okay, or the theory of most biologists. But here, right, the way the sentence is, guys, you're comparing a theory to a biologist, a person. Uh -uh. No good. No good. You've got to compare a theory to a theory, not a theory to a person. So D is the error. And if you... See, this is why prepping for the SAT and ACT makes an enormous difference. Because if you've, if you've spent a little time thinking about this concept, you're going to get this question right. But if you've never seen it before, you're reading the sentence, it's very wordy, it's very long, it's confusing, and you're just at a loss. So that's why, um, and I'm going to give you guys a couple of our resource materials in a second. If you just keep reviewing this information over and over, you're going to laugh when you take the SAT and ACT because you're going to see the same exact types of questions. Okay, um, so answer is D. You got to compare theory to theory. I've got to skip ahead, guys, to a couple of slides here. <clears throat> and so students say to me, "I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer," but um, so but. I actually, I have a bunch more things to say, and then I'm gonna, and, I'll, and then I'll, I'll stay and do a few more questions for, for those who want to stay. But people say to me, "What can I do as a next step?" Okay, 
Um, and this slide, I apologize, I, I was using this slide when I was doing a parent webinar. You, need, you should register for one of our SAT mini classes or ACT mini classes. Uh, the reason they're so popular is they're just an hour and a half long. So students like that because you, you don't have to sign up for like a 20 week SAT class where you're going to spend 8,000 hours you know, in, in, in some horrible dungeon somewhere. This is an hour and a half. You take the class right from home. You can sit there in your pajamas. And for an hour and a half, you will learn a ton of information, Ho just like hopefully you learned tonight. Um, now, you see the dates right there, guys, uh, on December 2nd, so right in a couple weeks. So coming right up, we're doing a math class, December 3rd, a reading class, December 4th, a writing class, December 5th, an advanced math class. The instructors we have are amazing, okay, plus they're a lot better looking than I am. Um, that's a joke. I, um, <laughs> Anyway, the classes are 8 to 9.30 at night, so it's a good time. You know, the school day's over, you get some homework done, you have your sports, your, you know, whatever activities you do, play. Now, if you're interested in registering, the URL is right there. You register right online, you use a credit card, it takes two seconds. The cost is $50, okay? So very minimal investment, okay? Could make a 100-point difference on your score, so great value. Welcome to GoToWebinar. Webinar is made easy. Click on Study From Home. You just scroll down and you see here SAT mini classes and ACT mini classes. So if you're taking the ACT, I'll just click on ACT just to show you the dates there. We have an ACT English class for those of you who feel like you need more help on English and grammar. ACT Science, okay, ACT Math and ACT Reading. And so you can see the dates are right here, okay? Now remember, if you can't be on live, we record these classes. So you can watch the recording whenever is good for you. Just like when you um, tape you know, DVR, a favorite TV show, watch it whenever it's convenient for you. When you sign up and you, and you pay, you get that recording, and it's going to be good for six months. You can watch the recording a second or third time. You can watch it the night before your SAT or ACT or the week before the SAT. So you guys get it. You can be on live, plus you can watch the class whenever is convenient for you. So for example, the ACT math class is December 11th. Okay, um, okay now some other resources. Let me, let me talk quickly because there's a lot of stuff that's going to help you guys a ton. So if you're on, and jot this down if you weren't aware of this, if you're on methodtestprep.com, you go to prep resources, okay, we have under prep resources, we have SAT and ACT review guides. Students really like these. It's just like when a teacher in school says, hey, study this. It's going to be on your SAT or going to be on your ACT. So you click on that, okay, and you fill in your information, and you can get these different review um, packets and study guides from us. So those are very, very popular. Great to print out and study before the exam. Um, we have a free 60-minute SAT and ACT prep class that we recorded, okay? You just need to put in your email for that. Um, you can watch that anytime you want. That's available on demand, okay? Whenever you want, we have the SAT and ACT test dates. But probably most importantly, we have upcoming webinars. So guys, when you go to methodstestprep.com, go to upcoming webinars, we have a lot of free webinars coming up. So we have a class on December 17th, okay? We're going to teach circle geometry, and we're actually going to teach a different grammar concept, so it's not a repeat of tonight. But even just for circle geometry, that's going to be a really valuable class. Every one of you guys should register for that class right now once this class is over. Also, we recorded one of our past classes. So we, we did a free class on exponent questions, questions involving exponents. And then also questions and um, strategies for reading passages. So that was a really popular webinar. A lot of students on. They found it to be very helpful. Well, you can just access that anytime you want. You click here, you put in your email address, and you're sent a recording of that class. So, hey, guys, if I was you, um, and it wasn't so long ago that I was in high school, I would register for every single one of these. Okay, We have a how to use your method test program account most effectively. We have a, a webinar that's going to be on December 3rd. We have a breakdown of this year's PSAT, the 
if you took the PSAT, you want to learn some strategies, some, some things you can learn from your exam, that's going to be on Tuesday, January 14th. And then we have a bunch more past webinars. So you guys get the picture. We have a ton of free webinars. Um, we have our blog, which contains a lot of good information, okay, and, and different posts. So a lot, a lot of stuff here. And um, I hope that most of you at least know if you have access to our web-based program. Okay, let me just sign on to that. So probably the majority of you have access to our web-based program. Um, and let me just log in. And the shame is that a lot of students actually do have access but don't know it. So if you're not sure if your school pays for every student to have access, go into guidance tomorrow and ask them, do, do we have access to Mecca Test Prep? A lot of schools have access through career cruising and through Castle Learning. So if any of those programs ring a bell, if either of those programs ring a bell, excuse me, then go into and see if that's how you log on to Method Test Prep. Some schools just use us directly. But either way, guys, when you get to methodtestprep.com and you log in to your account, you're going to see the checklist that you can follow. Each task in the checklist is five or ten minutes long. So we ask students to do four or five tasks a week. So we're talking about an hour a week. If you do an hour a week on our checklist, you will raise your score significantly. You will get into more colleges. You will get more financial aid and scholarship money. Okay, um, you will open more doors for yourself. So one hour a week investment will make a huge difference potentially you know, on your future and your options after high school. So um, there's 20 weeks in the checklist. Okay, even if you can't get through all 20 weeks, you can do the first couple. The tasks are very manageable and short. Um, there's videos that you can watch. So just a lot, a lot you can learn in a really short amount of time. That's the key. I don't want you guys spending all day every day on SAT prep. Okay, so that's how to you that that's the basic of our web-based program. Um, what I'd like to do now, everybody. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Um, what what I'm going to do is. I will go over some more questions. So anybody who wants to stay on Ken, um, I think I'm going to let my colleagues jump off. Thanks, guys, for being on. Um, Frank, you can stop the recording now. And